Hello everyone and welcome into today's reaction video. My name is KL and today I am watching Passengers from the year 2016 for the very first time. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Thank you so much for being here and I hope you are excited to watch this movie with me. The reason we're watching Passengers today is because I put my mom on the spot a little while ago and I asked her to pick three movies that she loves that I have never seen before and I would put them in a poll on Patreon. So my mom picked 27 Dresses, Passengers, and The Last Samurai. I threw that up on Patreon very last minute spontaneously. Nobody knew a poll was coming and Passengers and The Last Samurai actually tied, which has never happened before. I've not had a poll tie. So I did commit to the community that I would watch and react to both movies. So today is Passengers and The Last Samurai will come out in about two or three weeks. So if you don't want to miss that reaction, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also like this video. And thank you so much, mom, for being so cooperative with this. Uh, I kind of want to make the rounds around the rest of my family. I'd love to ask my dad for some movie options for polls. I'd love to get my brother to pick some movies for me. I think that would be super fun. So I might do that again very soon. So what do I know about Passengers? Well, I know that it stars Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. Now, Chris Pratt, I don't really have any like firm opinions about the man. I will say that I don't think his Mario voice is very good because yes, I did watch that trailer. <laughs> So we'll see what I think about him in this movie. As for Jennifer Lawrence, I really enjoy her. I've never actually seen very many of her movies though, including The Hunger Games. So you guys should let me know in the comments below if you think that I should watch and react to The Hunger Games for the channel. I will definitely keep that in mind if it's something you all want. But yeah, outside of that, I've watched a lot of her interviews and just kind of like her personality and how she acts, I just really vibe with. So I just like her for that reason. And the only other thing I know about this film is that it is set in space with astronauts. And just from that alone, I have a feeling Feeling that I will enjoy this movie unless there is something about it that just rubs me the wrong way, but I don't foresee that happening. I really, really love movies that are set in space. Interstellar is my top movie of all time, and ever since it came out, no movie has ever taken it out of its number one place. The Martian is in my top five movies. I really love Sunshine. I really enjoy Contact. So maybe Passengers will kind of just slip right in with these movies as like another favorite. And finally, if you are someone who prefers to watch along with me to the entire movie, you can find the full length reaction over on my Patreon, along with polls, my monthly newsletter, access to my Discord server, and exclusive reactions if you're interested and have the time to watch even more. I have watched and am watching so many shows over on my Patreon and it is such a fun time. All right, I have nothing else left to say, so it's time to press play. This looks like a wormhole or a spaceship. <laughs> okay, it's a spaceship. <laughs> it kind of looked like a wormhole though. It almost looked like the one from Interstellar from a distance, you know? I'm really enjoying this just very awesome opening scene, the Starship Avalon. This is a very unique ship design. Destination, the colony world of Homestead II or Homestead 2. This also kind of reminds me of the ship uh, from The Martian, kind of just the way that it's spinning and rotating like that. Status on autopilot. Okay. I was just about to say, I feel like all of the crew must be in hibernation. Oh, wow, 258 people. Okay. And five thought, wow. So I feel like if there's this many people on a ship like this, uh, Earth either no longer exists or Earth is close to dying. That's a lot of rocks. Oh no! Oh my god, that's massive. Jay Preston. Denver, mechanical engineer. Good morning, James. How are you feeling? Wait, what? You just spent 120 years in suspended animation. 120 years, oh my god. We've nearly completed the voyage from Earth to your new home. For the next four months, you'll enjoy space travel at its most luxurious. Let's get you to your cabin where you can get some rest. So is no one else uh, being woken up? This looks like a really fancy hotel. Take skill building classes and learn about colonial living. Okay, so everyone else is gonna be woken up too. He's just the first one. Will you all please take a seat? <laughs> just him, the fuck? I think I may be Hold in the wrong- Hold all questions till the end, please. Way of Where life. are all the other- And there's no colony. There are 5,000 passengers and 258 crew members. So why am I alone? We're all in this together. This feels very Titanic to me <laughs> when she's like running down the halls being like, hello, anyone? This elevator will experience a momentary lapse in gravity. This spaceship design is so cool. Wow, it's like a mall. I need to talk to a person. 
A real live person, please? What sort of person? Personal trainer? Travel planner? Therapist? I don't, I don't know. Just anyone. The ship steward handles passenger affairs. It's on level three of the Grand Concourse. Except it's not going to be a person, is it? Not good. The captain is usually found on the bridge in the command ring. But they said it was on autopilot, so I assume all the crew is in hibernation too, right? Is Jennifer Lawrence the captain? Bridge access requires special authorization. Yeah, we're still on autopilot. I hope we figure out why he was woken up. Welcome to the observatory. Whoa. Oh my god. I would spend all day in here. Show me Homestead 2. Homestead 2 is the fourth planet in the Bhakti system. And where are we? We will arrive in approximately 90 years. What? What? How long ago did we leave Earth? Approximately 30 years ago. But that lady said four months. Oh, God, so. How do I send a message to Earth? Interstellar messages are sent by laser array. This is an expensive service. Bite me. Happy to help. <laughs> Oh my god, 90 years. I think something went wrong with my hibernation pod. I woke up too soon. I don't know how to get back to sleep. There's 90 years to go. <sighs> At this rate, I'm... Dead before you get there. Imagine living the entire rest of your life on a spaceship like this. Because I assume that this character Jim is in his 30s, right? Message will arrive in 19 <gasps> years. What? what? Earliest reply in 55 years. What? We apologize for the delay. That will be six thousand twelve dollars. Oh my god. That's not a real person. This is giving me shining vibes. <laughs> and it feels like they took direct inspo from the shining with this scene. Can anyone confirm that? You look like a whiskey man. Uh, okay. Even the room is styled the exact same almost. Oh, you're a robot. Android, technically. Arthur's the name. How long until we get to Homestead 2? About 90 years or so. And when are all the passengers supposed to wake up? Not till the last four months. How is it that I'm sitting here with you? Also, why would he be there when everyone's sleeping for, what, 120 years? Like, why would he be here working at the bar when everyone's asleep? I don't understand that. This is so eerie. Sorry, the Mocha Cappuccino Extreme is reserved for gold class passengers. <laughs> wow. Sorry, the French Road. Sorry. The pumpkin sp spice, large coffee. Wow. Cream Please enjoy your coffee. Hey, good call. There we go. It's not going to do anything. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this point, he's desperate, though. Yeah, come in here and find a crew member that'll know what to do. I feel like it's kind of your only option at this point. Elevator to be critical. Uh oh. That's not good. Take a break from worrying about what you can't control. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's very pretty. <laughs> Love it. Arigatou gozaimasu. Dance off. Can we just give him the mocha, whatever it was, extreme, please? But he needs a shave. Oh my god, this place is a mess. Ew. Welcome, Jim. What is he thinking? Wow. So this ship just lets anyone do this, eh? If all the passengers were awake and it wasn't just Jim. Whoa. All right, never mind. I, pro I would probably be doing this, but maybe not that often. I feel like the observatory is still where I would be most of the time. This would probably scare me a lot. <gasps> uh, oh my god. It's a pretty heavy moment. Also, this is a great way of showing like the scale of this ship relative to the average person. I feel like Jim's falling into a bit of a depression. Uh, Is this Jennifer Lawrence's character? Yep. Aurora Lane, a writer from New York. Aurora. Searching passenger profiles. I'm Aurora Lane, passenger 1456. I'm a writer. I love how he just picked her randomly out of everyone to be like, you know what? I'm just going to pretend you're awake and become your friend. You are funny. Do you ever read something and feel like it's written just for you? I don't do a lot of reading. She's good. The sleeping girl. 
You know, I'm not saying the universe is evil, but it sure has a nasty sense of humor. You get to fly to another planet, but you'll die along the way. And you find the perfect woman right in front of you. Okay, you don't even know her, though. You literally just saw her face and went, oh, heck, she's cute. And that's it. Is he, is he going to force her to wake up? I don't know if I like that. Say you were trapped on a desert island and you had the power to wish somebody there with you. You wouldn't be alone anymore, but you'd be stranding a person on the island. Would you make that wish? That would make your life a million times better, but you knew it was wrong and there's no taking it back. How do you do the math? I know how to wake Aurora up and be stranding her on this ship for the rest of her life. Oh. Exactly. That... You can't do that. Okay. Like, I know you're lonely and alone, but that's... Ugh. That's a very hard moral question. Okay, so I feel like clearly he's going to go ahead and do it, right? I'm curious what her reaction is going to be. I feel like she's not going to be happy the same way that he wasn't happy when he realized he had woken up 90 years early. I really wish he had figured out how to get into the crew area because I would feel more okay with him waking up a member of the crew that could like help him get him back into hibernation rather than a fellow passenger. <laughs> I'm very nervous for how this is gonna go. <laughs> Good morning, Aurora. It's perfectly normal to feel confused. Maybe he's going to lie and tell her that her hibernation pod malfunctioned just like his. But then my guess is if he does that, she's going to then find out later that he did it intentionally. That's my running theory right now. Let's see if I'm right. Anybody? Hello. Jim Preston. Aurora Lane. The crew is still asleep. Are you saying nobody's awake? It's just us. We were early. We need help. How long have you been awake? A year and three weeks. Oh my god. Okay, I didn't realize it had been that long. We have to wow. go back to sleep. We just have to get back in our pot and start them up again. Stop. I don't I know which one is mine. I'll help you. I can't. Putting somebody into hibernation requires special equipment. Okay, so my theory is correct so far. He's just playing it cool like, oh, your pod malfunctioned too. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> She's going to figure it out. More than a year. I can't imagine. It must have been so hard for you. It was. You gonna tell him what you did, Jim? Aurora's awake. Congratulations. <laughs> you don't look happy. Well, he's got guilt on his shoulders, I think. <clears throat> like, big guilt. Don't tell Aurora that I woke her up. She thinks it was an accident. Let me tell her. How can there be no way to put someone back into hibernation? What if a pod breaks down? No hibernation pod has malfunctioned in thousands of interstellar flights. And this is the dumbest machine. Happy to help. <laughs> uh, okay, that didn't seem good. Critical error. Ew, well, what is he eating? Tastes. I'm not a gold class passenger. What? This whole time? <laughs> what can I get you? Get him the mocha, whatever, extreme. Maybe there's another way to go to sleep. What about the infirmary? I checked it out. It's just scanners and an auto dock. Jim, you're not even trying. I have tried everything. Oh, well, I'm not ready to give up. Two brains are better than one. So, you know, maybe she'll think of something that Jim didn't. <laughs> what was that about? I boarded the Avalon with an idea, a destination, both now out of reach. I've been awake for seven days, but I'm scared. Love that swimsuit. Oh my God, this pool is so cool. Okay, I would also spend a lot of time there. My only companion, a total stranger. Why did you do it? Do what? Immigrate. Leave Earth. Oh. <laughs> we both had the same thought, like, wait, what? <laughs> Why did you give up your life on Earth? I could ask you the same thing. But it's my interview. Well, I guess I just wanted a new world. I don't know, a fresh start. That's Homestead Company advertising. That's a very drastic and permanent fresh start. Can't say that I would do the same. Back on Earth, when something breaks, you don't fix it, you replace it. One of the colonies, they have problems to solve. And they're my kind of problems. And a mechanic is somebody. Do you know how much Homestead Company made off its first planet? Eight quadrillion dollars. Did you pay full price for your ticket? No, I'm in a desirable trade. Give Homestead 20% of everything that you make for the rest of your life. Not oh. 
Damn. So why is she here then? For 5,000 different reasons. You don't know these people. I'm a journalist. I know people. All right. Chef, accountant, or midwife? She has to be a midwife. There's no way you just made that one up. <laughs> She's a midwife. <laughs> We'd be friends. You think you can see that? Don't you? I do. A round trip ticket. I was gonna fly to Homestead too, live for a year, and then right back there. Oh, wow. I end up in the future, 250 years in the future. That would be a hard return to Earth, though. I could not imagine leaving Earth and then returning 250 years in the future. I feel like Earth would change so much. I'll never write it now. I don't know if I'll ever write again. Jim, I can't think of anything else to try. What is there to do around here? Are you serious? <laughs> Well, you got to have some fun when you're stuck in a life like this. I'm very curious, though, now, like, I, I don't know how this movie is going to end. I truly don't know if it's going to be like a happy ending or maybe an ending of acceptance for them, which isn't necessarily happy. But, you know, I don't know. I swear I didn't wear pants for a month. It's seven weeks and two days, to be exact. The man has no shame. I laughed at the man with no pants until I realized I have no legs. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute, I almost forgot my life is in ruins. Good night. All right. Good night, Aurora. She is wonderful. That guilt is still hanging. I mean, obviously, the social company is appreciated for both of them, but <clears throat> the circumstances around her are still really shitty. Oh, okay. He fixed it. Awesome. Hello. What is it, though? There you go. All right, kind of cute-ish. Eh, I'll take away the ish. It's pretty cute. She gonna... Mm, was just about to ask, is she gonna look bomb? And the answer is yes. Yes, she is gonna look. You two look fine this evening. Thank you, Arthur. We're on a date. Took you long enough to ask. Oh. I was giving you space. Space. The one thing I do not need more of. That was so good. Well, it wasn't easy getting a reservation. They're probably going to want us to give up our table. Mm -hmm. Getting a lot of dirty looks. <laughs> Why are we here? You see. Oh, so are they doing the... Mm -hmm. And it's safe? No. <sighs> Reasonably safe. <sighs> Pretty epic way to cap off a date. Are you going to make her go off the edge? Oh my god. What are you doing? Do you trust me? <laughs> Not gonna reach each other's. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> That's so awkward. <laughs> All right, this is the real cap off to the date. And also to be expected when you're the only two people around. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. J Law is very pretty, pretty. Also, I really like this hairstyle on her. I think it suits her. You okay? I'm fine. Yeah, I know. So, I'm seeing someone. Jim and I live in accidental happiness. We plan our futures like we're the captains of our fate. But we're passengers. We go where fate takes us. And for the first time in my life, I don't feel alone. You know, for two unlucky people, we sure got pretty lucky. The truth's gotta come out, though. <laughs> I'm just patiently waiting. <laughs> Ooh. And this is giving me Sunshine vibes. I haven't watched Sunshine in a very long time. That's a movie I need to rewatch soon because I love that movie. Wow. Happy birthday to... <laughs> I love these droids. <laughs> the birthday go. Aren't you going to ask for my ID? I might not be old enough to drink. Oh, I would never ask your age in front of a gentleman. <laughs> Jim's no gentleman. Anyway, there's no secrets between me and Jim. Is that so? Oh, my you God. the lady. Is Arthur going to be the one to say something and spoil it? Oh, wow. I remember this day a year ago. Jim was so looking forward to meeting you. What? How could he be looking forward to Yeah, here we go. Oh, he spent months deciding oh whether to wake you up. He couldn't stop talking about you. Jim woke me up. Knew it. <clears throat> oh, yes. He said it was the hardest decision of his life. Fuck, I'd be hella pissed if I was her. Did you wake me up? How could you do 
you it. Because I was lonely. I tried not to. <gasps> Aurora, please. Stay away from me. Yeah, you're not going to be doing that anytime soon, my guy. She's going to give you the biggest, fattest nope you've ever heard in your life. Can I talk to you? God, I like can't. I'm trying to picture myself in those shoes. I would totally feel like my life had been taken from me. Like just robbed of my life. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, physical violence is excessive. Well, Jim, I hope you enjoyed the last however long she's been awake, because I don't know if things are going to go back to the way they were. What are you doing? I don't know nothing I can say will make this okay. Ugh. I was so alone. You saved my life. Yeah, and you ruined hers. I read everything you wrote. And I fell in love with your voice. I fell in love with you. And I wish I could take it back. Aurora, I don't want to lose you. I don't care! I don't care why you woke me up! You took my life! God, that sucks so bad. I feel so bad for her. Um... <laughs> Well, that's not good. How's your book coming along? I think it's some of the best work I've ever done, and I don't even know why I'm doing it. There's only one person who could read it, and I can't stand it. Aurora, we love you! What are we gonna do without you? You were never happy here. I know. Since you're going, here's my wish. I hope you finally find someone who fills your heart, and I hope you let him in. Have fun. It's a little heartbreaking. And what have you been making? Improvements. Grand concourse. There's always got to be ship malfunctions. And this ship is having a lot of them all of a sudden. Gold class breakfast. <gasps> oh yeah, this isn't good. Oh god, I would... <sighs> I was just about to say, I'd be so scared that the elevator would all of a sudden go up. Out of the tree on my ship. Wait, hello? <gasps> oh, hey, Lawrence Fishburne. Thought I recognized the voice. How far along are we? 88 years to go. So it's been two years since Jim woke up. About a year for Aurora-ish. Three people, three pod failures. Well, and other things are failing too. The ship is kind of just not having a good time. You have no idea how long I've been trying to get in there. Oh, <gasps> yay. This is flight crew, I'm a deck chief. We're still on course, so whatever's wrong with the ship, NAVCOM is still on the job. We should be getting diagnostics from all over the ship right here, but there's no data. Gotta check all the systems manually. Yeah. You okay? Hibernation anymore. Get it all the time. All the time? How often does he do this? <laughs> I'm very relieved that they have a third person now and it's not just the two of them. I feel like that's going to help Aurora mentally just continue living life, you know? And also Jim too, but I don't care as much about Jim anymore. <laughs> I checked your pod. Problem's very simple. The uh, clock chip's burnt out. It ain't supposed to happen, but pretty simple. But Aurora's pod. Yeah, well... <clears throat> You did this. All this time, I'm thinking you're one lucky son of a bitch to get stuck with Aurora. She knows. How long were you alone? A year. Still. Damn. Yep. So you know what Jim did? Yeah. It's not my fault. He woke me up. He took away my life. I know, and I'm sorry. But there's work I It's like. murder. I wouldn't call that murder. That's kind of a good moral question though. Like, would you consider that murder? The way that I feel murder is currently defined, I would not consider it murder, but I can see how some people would think that. Okay, Gus, what's going on with you? This isn't good. Oh yeah, coughing blood, never a good sign. I hope Gus doesn't die, cause that would suck. Uh, gravity loss. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. How do you... Can you even get out of... Oh, my God. The visuals of this look so cool, but I'm so scared for her. <sighs> oh, ouch. Oh, my God, get out of the water. That is scary. Computer, display these failures over time. 
It started two years ago, power surge. 17 failures in one day. A major system went down somewhere. Give me risk analysis based on this data. Extrapolating. I feel like the worst. critical failure is imminent. Not a lot of things big enough to hit this ship that hard. Oh, you know, was it the big rock at the very start of the movie? Like, I know the rock. Gus! Oh my god, Gus? Like, I know the rock broke up into a bunch of little pieces, but I think one of those pieces hit something critical and then that started this whole thing. I don't know why I forgot about that. 612 but... disorders found. Uh, 612? Right on my authority, ID 2317. Pansystemic necrosis. Progressive organ failure. Cause unknown. How long have I got? Your end of life transition is already underway. No. These sedatives will alleviate your suffering during these final hours. Wow. I need a minute. We are experiencing difficulties in flight. Go! Yeah, please don't leave him alone when he dies. Nobody should ever have to die alone. You two take care of each other. My ID. Fix shit. You look magnificent. Rest in peace, Gus. You weren't here very long, but you did good. Can you fix this? I need your help. Yeah, at this point, you two are going to have to cooperate and be okay being around each other. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh no, Arthur. I love that makeup on him. Well, can't tell if it's makeup or just CGI. What are we even looking for? Something broken. The whole section's closed off. Something's wrong. We're looking for wrong. Ah! Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please secure all doors. Hold on! Grab it! <laughs> A hole in the ship. More than one. It's supposed to be meteor proof. I guess one got through. I think we found it. It's the reactor control computer. How can we fix this? Good question. As soon as I pull this module, the entire computer is going to shut down. Well, what happens then? I'll get it back up as quickly as I can. Control computer restored. Venting reactor. Reactor vent failed. Manual override required. Outer door non-responsive. What does that mean? We've got to open that door and cool the reactor down or the whole ship is going to blow. I got to go out there. Stressful. What happens to you when that door opens? Heat shield. Might help. Oh, dear. Might need this. Jim could die. That is possible. It, will it happen? I have no idea. Jim, come back to me. I can't live on the ship without you. I feel like that statement was a general acceptance of what happened to her. Obviously, she's still upset by it, but probably realized in that moment, like, holy shit, I could potentially be alone, which, you know, also sucks. But you're critical. <laughs> oh, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Oh my god, no. What's the matter? Are you okay? Nothing. Go. Containment unstable. <gasps> Where are you? I'm at the door. I'm ready, just say when. The door won't open. I'll have to bypass it. Please, hurry! Okay, I'm trying it again. Won't stay open unless he's... Mmm, that sucks. I think I have to stay here. You didn't know! We're out of time. <sighs> Vent reactor. If I open the door right now, it'll kill you! I'm hoping not. Warning, temperature level exceeded. There are 5,000 other people on this ship, Aurora. Plus 253 crew. Or 252 crew. Do it. Now. Do it, do it, do it now. Temperature dropping. Jim. Vent successful. Dropping. Aurora? It worked! You did it! You can come in! I got blown out of the tube. My tether broke. I can't get back to the ship. I'll come out. I'll come out. I'll pull you in. I'm sorry. 
I wish we'd have met in 90 years. How long do these tethers go? I'm coming to get you. Of course. Of course. Tether has to lock. Oh, hey. Look at that. The patient is dead. Well, right, stop it, Tatum! Override! Override on my authority! One, seven, three, two, three, one, seven! I need two, three, one, seven! Do it now! Executing. I feel like at this point he is gonna come back because I feel like this movie is gonna wrap up on a heavy note or heavy <laughs> happy <laughs> happy note you brought me back yeah <laughs> yeah she doesn't hate that much anymore <laughs> all right ship is fixed Jim's alive Aurora seems to have forgiven. Oh, and they're fixing Arthur. Hell yes. Oh. There's something I have to show you. In command mode, it turns out the auto dock has an option called stabilize and suspend. Hibernation. With Gus's ID, it can be like hibernation. Inside the auto dock, you can go back to sleep. But there's only one auto dock. Why would a ship with 5,253 people have one auto dock? That seems like a big flaw. You finish your journey, you do what you set out to do. You'd be alone. I've been alone before, and I'll be fine. Is she gonna do this? There's a part of me that thinks she's not. Or maybe she did. Lovely as ever. Thank you, Arthur. You're looking very well yourself. Love that dress. What's that? Something I've wanted to give you for a long time. It's beautiful. Long enough to ask. <laughs> well, to be fair, you hated the guy. <laughs> oh, hey, Homestead too. 88 years. Oh, we're jumping in time until the arrival. Okay. Do we get to see the ship filled with everyone? Crew wake up process initiated. Oh, hell yeah. If you're reading this, then the starship Avalon has reached its destination. A lot happened while you slept. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. And we made a life. Holy. A beautiful life. Together. The end. Huh. There we go. So that was Passengers, and I have very mixed feelings about this one. I needed to eat as soon as I was finished recording the movie, so I went and made food and ate the food, and while I was doing all of that, I kept replaying the movie in my mind and kind of just trying to work out exactly how I feel about it. So I've had some time to figure out my thoughts on this one. I'm going to start with my criticisms and my dislikes first and get that out of the way. And then I will talk about what I liked about this movie because there are definitely lots of things that I did enjoy. But unfortunately, the criticisms that I have about this do not make this a movie that I will ever rewatch again. And I'm so sorry, mom, I feel bad. <laughs> the way that I feel about this film is that it started off so good and my hopes were really high and I really enjoyed the story that was presented to us and kind of the direction that it was going in. But after the halfway mark in the film, I felt that hope just kind of slowly go away and away and away and away. <laughs> I always try my best to enjoy the movies that I watch, especially the ones here on the channel, but unfortunately some movies just don't for me and this is not the first movie that I have reacted to on the channel where it just doesn't quite sit with me well. I would have enjoyed this movie a lot more if the entire romance aspect was either removed completely or if it had happened in a much more natural way. With respect to removing it entirely, I feel this way because I'm a firm believer that there doesn't have to be a romance in a movie. And I especially feel that in a very heavy sci-fi movie such as this, it kind of just takes away from all of that. In my opinion, a hetero man and a hetero woman can easily just be friends, just be acquaintances, come together, work together to solve a problem, and it will still be an interesting story. You don't 
always have to force your male and female leads to develop a romantic relationship. Since they obviously wanted a love story in this film, I do wish that it, they had gone about it a different way, and here's what I mean. When Jim's pod failed and he was alone trying to figure things out by himself for the first year, obviously his priority was trying to get that crew pod room open, right? He was making a smart decision by prioritizing, trying to wake someone up that would know what the fuck to do in this situation, right? Someone that could try and figure out why the pod did what it did and woke up Jim early and then ultimately try and get Jim to go back into hibernation for the remainder of the trip. This is obviously the smartest thing that someone like Jim would do in this situation. I think anyone that would have woken up would have tried to do this. Though at the same time, I feel like if his desperation became panic, he probably would have been a little bit more selective about who he woke up because everyone's occupation was shown on their pod, right? So instead of choosing a writer, he probably would have chosen a fellow mechanic or someone with skills like that that could help him out with the ship. And the thing is, whether it was Aurora or someone else that had better skills to be able to help him, there still would have been the ethical dilemma present in the story about do you decide the fate of someone's life and wake them up and essentially choose that on their behalf. Like that still would have existed no matter if it was a man or a woman, no matter if there was a love interest developing or not no matter what their occupation was, like, it still would have existed. And the consequence of Jim doing that could have still been explored in this movie, and I think that it was a very, very important part of the story. And if it had played out that way, then we could have avoided all the problematic parasocialness that exists in the movie right now. And with that, the whole parasocialness of Jim and Aurora just really rubs me the wrong way, especially as someone that creates videos and streams online where parasocial relationships can become a very real thing and it gives me the yucky yucks. So let's talk about that. So Jim saw Aurora from afar, just chilling out in her hibernation pod and he felt physical attraction to her, which I don't blame him. Jennifer Lawrence is a very attractive person and we cannot control who we are physically attracted to. It's just something that we feel inside. It happens, whatever. That's not my issue. My issue is that he decided to look up everything he possibly could about her and then sat on that for an absurdly long period of time. He watched her videos, he read her writing, and he ultimately decided, wow, I am so in love with her. But we have to remember that he only consumed the information that she willingly put out there for him to consume. He fell in love with her without having any conversation with her, without having technically met her in person, nothing. And that's where my biggest problem is. If you develop feelings for someone and you've never not once had an actual conversation with them and you're just falling in love with how they present themselves on video, the words that they type and share online through their social media, that's just not great because you don't actually know them. So yeah, he basically just decided, wow, this person seems really great. I really love them and decided to basically wake her up and decide the fate of her life as a result. And I just really, really hate that. That being said, I still think that that was okay to stay in this movie and it obviously did stay in this movie, right? So that made me start really looking forward to when Aurora would eventually find out that her pod didn't actually fail and that she was intentionally woken up, seemingly just based on the fact that she was hot. Hot and fulfilling horniness of a man that was all alone on the ship. When that moment happened in the movie, I was very, very satisfied with Jennifer Lawrence's performance. I thought that she acted those scenes really, really well. It was very believable and I give her props for that. I truly think my biggest criticism of this movie is the fact that after all of that happened, the, the story just decided to really downplay that and kind of almost forget about it. And the story just turned into some sappy, happy, romantic vibes with a little bit of tension in the whole ship having issues. But this movie had so much potential with this story and it just felt very wasted. I think an easy decision in the writing that would have made this movie actually land a lot better for me is at the end. I really wish that Aurora had decided to go back into hibernation and continue on with her original desire of getting on the ship to begin with to go to the planet. I think that this is what Jim truly deserved for his very selfish decision was to be alone again. The fact that she decided to stay with him and she cited the reason so that he wouldn't be alone again just feels very blunt to me and it feels like she is completely sacrificing her own life and her own plans just to be with this guy that really didn't treat her well from the very beginning. The term murder was brought up in the movie and in the moment I called that excessive and I wasn't sure how I felt about the term murder being thrown around. I did say 
that I would love feedback from you all in the comments about that and kind of what you think about that. So let's just keep that whole like murder thing here. Like let's go full steam ahead with that. That makes me even more upset that Aurora decided to stay on the ship and live out the rest of her life with this guy who murdered her. <sighs> I don't know. It just, if it were me, I literally would, would have been like, okay, well, this is fun. I'm glad the ship is up and running now without issue, but I'm still very, very mad at you. And I am definitely going to take this auto dock and go into hibernation. See you never. <laughs> My last criticism is about Lawrence Fishburne's character. I really wish that we would have had more screen time with him. I feel like he was only around for 10 minutes. I really wish that he was going to be more important to the story, aside from, I guess, just being the one to give them access to the areas that they needed access to and then kind of handing his wristband to them at the end, you know? Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like his character was like half important for the story in order for it to progress, but then also half wasted and unnecessary. I don't know. I really like Lawrence Fishburne, so I wish he would have been around more. It was also nice when he was around because then the focus wasn't just on Chris and Jennifer Lawrence, but we had him there and it was just another human to be part of this. I, yeah, I don't know. Wish he would have been around a bit longer. All right, it is time to talk about what I actually did enjoy from this movie because I do have a list of things that I really enjoyed. First thing we got to talk about is the opening shots of this film. Oh my God, the visuals were absolutely stunning. I love the design of the ship and I thought that it was incredibly unique. I loved the outside, I loved the inside, I loved all of the different rooms that we found ourselves in and just how things were structured and set up. I loved the tree that was put in the middle of the Grand Concourse. I thought it looked really nice. And I don't know, just seeing Jennifer Lawrence run around all the different levels when she was going on her runs, the pool, the pool was awesome, the observatory, like all of that was just stunning. And I really, really liked that. I also really enjoyed the entire film up until Jennifer Lawrence was woken up. I thought that Chris Pratt's performance was at its peak during those scenes when his character was alone. And I really enjoyed just watching him kind of try and figure things out and go, what the fuck do I do? And just try and make the best of the situation up until he then decided to be selfish and do what he did. I really enjoyed Jennifer Lawrence's performance in this movie. I just really wish that Aurora was written better. I think that J-Law did an awesome job. And like I said, the highlight for me is when she found out that she had been intentionally woken up and that her pod didn't actually fail. I think her acting during all of that was the best. I really enjoyed the Lloyd from The Shining wannabe in Arthur the Droid. I thought that the conversations with him were great and I loved all of the scenes where they were in the bar having drinks with Arthur there. I thought that, uh, is it Martin Sheen, the actor? I think it's Martin Sheen. Yeah, I thought Arthur was great. I don't have a lot to say about the soundtrack in particular, but anytime that there was really awesome music playing, I was enjoying it. I'll have to go and pull up the soundtrack alone on YouTube and give it another listen. And finally, just to recap, I really enjoyed how this story started and I it hooked me in and I was really looking forward to watching it play out. Unfortunately, it just didn't quite play out the way that I was expecting, but that's okay. So normally this section of my review is where I go on the Wikipedia and I look up like fun facty information, but the passenger's Wikipedia page is kind of bare. <laughs> There's actually not a whole lot of information on there. So I decided to actually pull up the trailer and watch it. Unfortunately, I did not record my reaction to watching the trailer, but I will tell you right now that the trailer makes this movie seem like a completely different situation. If the movie played out the way the trailer made it seem like it would play out, I would have enjoyed it a lot more because the trailer basically was telling you, oh, both Aurora and Jim's pods woke them up. Something happened. Now they have to figure out what the fuck is going on on the ship. The trailer does not at all give any indication that Jim was the one that woke up Aurora. So yeah, since the trailer made it seem like they both just kind of found themselves in this situation, I really wish that the story had actually just done that. And I think that would have been a lot more entertaining. I really wish that that's what would have happened. All right, it is time to go to Letterboxd and cherry pick out some reviews that made me chuckle. So here we go. All right, the first review I see that give me a little laugh, rated one and a half stars by Carol, saying, why can't she see that I'm just a nice guy? The movie. Accurate as fuck. <laughs> this three and a half star review by Diamond Bolt, I really enjoy as well. Ha, jokes on everyone else when they've eaten through 90 years worth of food. <laughs> but that also begs the question, how much food would that ship have stored? Because I assume that everyone went into hibernation fairly soon after they left Earth, right? And they were set to wake up four months before arriving. So let's say that the ship probably only has a year worth of food for 
5,000 people. Well, yeah, okay. They would they would have enough food, I think. All right, and now we arrive to the moment where I ask you, what do you think of this movie? Do you kind of feel like I do, or do you really enjoy it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please click here to do so. It means the world, and if you want to continue watching one of my reaction videos, please click over here. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.